All right, uh, welcome back from lunch. Uh, my name is Matt. I work for Google, uh, and I'm here today to talk about uh, Clang Diagnostics and uh, some, some interesting uh, measurement work we've done about, about Clang Diagnostics. Um, so here's briefly uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Um, uh, I suspect a lot of you are sort of familiar with what Clang Diagnostics look under the hood, look like under the hood, but if not, talk about that a little bit. Um, going to talk about the uh, design and implementation of the uh, uh, system we built to, um, to process uh, uh, client diagnostics output into something that we can um, sort of uh, you know, query and understand uh, in a more structured way. Uh, and then uh, the, the really interesting part is some of the statistics and, and uh, a few stories about um, the data that we've actually collected so far, uh, and then uh, time for questions. So uh, this is what a, a Clang uh, diagnostic looks like um, within, uh, within the, the Clang code base. Uh, so we have a, a table gen file um, that gives the diagnostic a name, um, tells you what level it is. In this case, it's a warning, uh, as opposed to a, a note or an error. Um, and then there's this format string. Uh, and the format string has a number of placeholders in it. Um, so there's this, uh, this select construct here that says, you know, um, it may be one of these pieces of text, or the you know, percent one um, says, you know, this is going to be filled in with some you know, fairly arbitrary text, uh, and then you know, some, some literal description of what the, the error message is really talking about. Um, and then in the actual implementation of the warning uh, in the you know, C++ file, um, you know, there's some, some code that uh, checks to see you know, what should we, should we give this warning. Um, and then we, uh, we call this diag function. Uh, we uh, pass it a location, which is sort of the primary location that gets used for printing out the file, line, and column um, that you'll see in, in you know, Clang's diagnostic output. Uh, again, we give the, the name of this diagnostic, um, the sort of programmatic name. Um, and then we use the um, streaming operator to stream in a, an argument. Uh, you know, in this case, the first one is a, an enum that um, chooses which of those, uh, the branches of that uh, select placeholder uh, gets output, and then uh, the record um, uh, gets translated into uh, the, the name of the, uh, the, the record type um, and, and filled in that second placeholder. Um, so that might produce an error like this. Uh, and so, so, you know, a developer might see this in their day-to-day -day work. And um, our goal today is that we want to we want to take that we want to um, have a system that can look at uh, the error text produced by Clang um, and produce this sort of nice uh, structured form of this um, this diagnostic uh, in term in, in as something we can then you know programmatically look at later and aggregate and um, slice and dice in different ways. Um, and so the, you know, the, the, some of the interesting features that we want to get out of this are, you know, where did the error occur, file, line, and column, um, which format string was used, what were the arguments to the format, and then it turns out to be kind of convenient to actually have the, um, the, the full text of the, of the warning for, for some of the thing, questions we want to ask. Um, and it turns out there are a few other features uh, that sort of like didn't want to fit on the slide, like um, an include stack. Um, the whole, uh, the whole thing is sort of uh, nested within itself to uh, associate notes with a, a primary warning or error, uh, different things like that. All right, uh, some of you who, who know the Clang Diagnostics code deeply are probably sort of twitching a little bit like, oh, you know, we have this really cool structured output. Um, you know, it's meant to be machine parsable. Why didn't you just use that? Um, so the system we wanted to build, uh, we wanted to have something that was a little bit um, more generic, and actually um, we've already uh, extended it a little bit to help our friends on the Java C team uh, look at some of their diagnostics, um, and you know, they, don't, they don't have that option of, of asking Java C for a structured diagnostic, so we wanted to build something that would sort of work on, uh, on you know, just the textual output directly. Um, and then, uh, as cool and, and you know, big and scalable as Google's build system is, it's kind of hard to teach it new tricks sometimes. Um, so uh, 
trying to teach it that, oh, hey, you know, sometimes Clang is going to produce this extra file, and you, you, know, you should you know, fetch that and save it and store it so we can look at it later um, was going to be a lot of work. So I didn't want to do that. All right. Um, so here's our, here's our diagnostic again. Um, and uh, uh, what we want to do is um, turn this into a uh, regular expression that can match the message that Clang prints. Um, and so we do this in, in really a pretty straightforward way. Um, so for these sort of uh, you know, generic placeholders, uh, like the percent one, um, we say you know, match anything. Like we don't really know what it's going to be. So just match anything. Uh, for a select, um, you know, use each branch, or you know, sort of uh, alternate between each branch of the select. Um, there are a couple other uh, types of placeholders, um, so like a, a plural or a, um, uh, some other some other different things. And they again, they get translated in sort of a straightforward way. Um, and and so we end up with this regular expression, uh, and it has match groups for each of the placeholders. Um, so the one of the subtleties. Uh, uh, comes um, so here's here's a, some examples of uh, some you know diagnostic format strings that Clang has. Um, you can see they, there's some similarities here. Um, so the first is a, a um, unknown type name with a typo correction. Second is just you know no typo correction, and the third is uh, percent zero, just a placeholder. Um, show of hands, can anybody guess what that diagnostic might be? Anybody know? One. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, pound error, also pound warning, also pragma message. Um, so, so it turns out we have a few of these um, that are just, you know, match anything. Um, so here are the regular expressions that we build for these. Uh, you know, again, sort of, sort of obvious, you know, have the two placeholders for the first one, one placeholder for the second one, and, and the third one is just a placeholder. Um, so when we see this diagnostic text, uh, you, might, you might be seeing sort of where I'm going with this, that um, what's, what's going to happen with these regular expressions? Um, so we get, for the first one, we get uh, the, the match groups, match, bar, and baz, uh, as, as sort of, you know, you'd intuitively expect. That's, this is what, what we're actually really going, going for. Um, the second one uh, sort of matches the whole end of the string, um, which is not what we want. And the third one matches the, the entire string. Um, so we needed some way to, to um, uh, disambiguate these or, or, you know, to select a particular format string so we, we knew which one we were actually talking about. And the, um, the heuristic we, we ended up with, which works really well, is um, just take, take the match groups, take the lengths of them, add them all, and take the format that gives you the shortest total length of uh, uh, text from the match groups. Which is sort of the, the inverse of that is it had, um, that's the one that uh, where the regular expression matched the most literal text. Um, so it's sort of the, the idea is it's sort of the most specific uh, um, expression. Um, and then the, uh, sort of the, the, the rest of the implementation is um, not really that interesting, just sort of fiddly, and you know, there's a lot of other you know, regular expressions, like um, this ugly guy up here is, is actually how you, how you match uh, the you know the overall first line that that Clang prints with the file line column, um, various ANSI escapes the you know the level, uh, so you can sort of have to pull pull those bits out individually. Uh, and there's a fair amount of other machinery um, for some of these other things that uh, that I mentioned, like include stacks um, and uh, associating notes with the the primary diagnostic, um, and then you know Clang prints other things like. Uh, a text, you know, a code snippet and a, a carrot diagnostic and maybe a, um, a line representing a, a fix it. Um, so we sort of have to skip over that. Um, okay, so with that we have uh, a, a parser that takes a, some chunk of uh, standard error output and um, chops it up into little bits and, and picks out, you know, the, the sort of interesting parts and, and fills in some fields in this record. Um, so entered the power of MapReduce. Um, 
MapReduce is, is Google's favorite large-scale, massively parallel computation framework. Um, our build system stores all of the build outputs, including compiler error messages for some time. Um, and so we can just point MapReduce at that. Uh, and, and this turns out to be very useful. Um, so our, our map input is some, some general information about the build that happened. Um, so, so a Google engineer went and said, you know, here, I want to build my binary. Um, and it came back with some errors. Um, so we have the generic information about the build uh, and the actual Clang standard error. Um, that gets mapped into uh, some number of diagnostic records. Um, we hash those uh, to feed to the reduced stage just to sort of um, spread out the computation nicely. Uh, and then the reduced uh, stage does a very minimal uh, uh, deduplication. So um, in general, in a build, you might see a really similar error more than once. Um, but we only care about uh, you know, precisely identical errors that actually came from like, the same file being built in slightly different configurations, which can happen uh, sometimes in our build system. Um, so it deduplicates at that level, but if you have, say, uh, the same, uh, same error coming from a header um, and, uh, you know, multiple times, um, those don't get deduplicated. We, we, you know, we do record all of those. All right, so, uh, so much for the, um, the sort of how we're collecting the data. Um, any, any questions so far? Any, um, does everybody sort of understand what this, um, these, in, these records look like and, and how we get there? All right. Um, so uh, the data. Um, so all the data that I'm going to be talking about is a, a subset of the data we've collected so far that represents uh, 30,000 engineer weeks worth of builds. Um, so I can't tell you how many engineers that is uh, and can't tell you how many weeks that is, um, but it's uh, you know, a pretty good amount of, of you know, sort of engineering time and, and, and work. Um, and uh, you know, these are the, the um, diagnostics that, that Google engineers are seeing in their day-to-day -day work. Um, uh, so there's uh, over that, that 30,000 engineer weeks, you know, almost 4 million uh, individual diagnostics. Um, you can sort of see the breakdown of uh, you know, the different levels. Um, <laughs> As you may guess, we build with W error, um, you know, as, as you do righteously. Sorry, question? Uh, what size of the call uh, millions of lines, I think, is the number we can say. <laughs> 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 many, many lines. <laughs> um, it's a lot. <laughs> um, is that, like, I, I can't really give a lot of, you know, details there, but. No, all, every, every um, C++ project across Google. I mean, it's all a shared code base, so there's, um, there are, um, you know, there's shared, uh, you know, common infrastructure library code, um, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, everything from, you know, I don't know, uh, yeah, all, all of Google's, you know, C++ code. Anybody else? Um, so yeah, so we, d we don't have very many warnings that get emitted as warnings. We do get a few that um, uh, are emitted as errors. Um, so, uh, so let's break this down a little bit. Um, here are the most common errors that Google engineers see uh, over you know, 30,000 engineer weeks. Um, as you can see, a lot of these are of the form you gave me an identifier, and I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and then, uh, you know, sort of the other you know, common things. These are, these are things you sort of might expect, you know, being, I suspect a lot of you are C++ programmers yourselves, so, um, you know, you made a function call and didn't give it enough arguments or gave it too many arguments, and we said, what are you talking about? Um, or you had a forward declaration and, uh, you know, then tried to use the type, things like that. Um, there is sort of one, uh, one interesting pattern here, um, typo correction, 
We have a number of diagnostics where we have a non-typo correction, typo correction version. And so we can look at how many times we typo correct versus not. Uh, so here's, here's sort of a, a I think this is um, all of the diagnostics that, act, that have a did you mean X at the end um, and their you know, non-typo uh, correcting version um, and how frequently they occurred in this, uh, in this uh, data sample. Um, so the, the interesting thing is sort of the you know, relative number of times that we, um, we offered a, a correction um, for uh, the um, uh, class member names. Uh, we corrected you know, uh, about 24%. Um, uh, similarly, uh, names in namespaces, about 23%. Um, undeclared identifiers, sort of generic, more, a little bit more generic. Uh, we correct a little bit more often. Um, out of line definition of a, a member function, we correct very rarely. Uh, so this is kind of like, we, we looked at this number and said, huh, that's interesting. Compared to these other, you know, these others that are you know, several times higher, you know, why is this? And so our best guess um, is that programmers are doing one of two things. Uh, either just copying and pasting the uh, uh, declaration into the implementation file, uh, in which case you know, they, they get it right, there's no typo, um, or uh, writing the implementation without first adding it to uh, the header file and then you know, there's nothing to correct it to. Um, and so you know, relatively rarely do they actually go and um, you know, type out a, a, a new declaration, uh, or sorry, a new definition um, that you know, looks almost like uh, something that they, they uh, added to the, that they had a, a, a declaration for. Um, and then finally, this, this one's really cool. Um, so for unknown type name, we typo correct over half of them. Uh, and so I, this was, um, I thought, again, this was really interesting and went digging into it a little bit more. Um, it turns out that uh, out of all of these, 34% uh, of the time we offer a typo correction with a uh, nested uh, uh, name specifier. So we say, you know, or you said uh, foo, and we said, did you mean bar colon colon foo? Um, and uh, so, so again, we do that 34% of the time. So if you sort of subtract that off of the, the total number of times that we offer typo correction, you're back down to 23%, um, which is, again, very similar to the other, uh, um, some of the, the, the first couple of, of flavors of this that I showed. Yeah, question? Um, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the, so the question is, um, how many of those are std string or std vector? Um, our, our style is that we have uh, a, um, using std vector um, in, a, in a common header. So uh, very, very few, <laughs> as it turns out. Um, I, I don't remember what the, uh, I, I looked briefly at, at whether there were um, you know, common patterns that I were, you know, code that I could talk about, and I don't, I don't think there were. Um, all right, so uh, that was errors. I'm gonna move on to, to warnings. Again, you know, most of these show up as um, dash, dash W error, so they're, you know, they're, they're um, build breaks. Um, uh, and so there, um, there's some, uh, some bias here because we turn on certain warnings, uh, turn off certain warnings, um, you know, based on just different, um, you know, sort of style determinations of, of what we want to enforce and what we don't. Um, this is kind of an interesting list. Uh, one thing, you know, sort of popped out at me uh, is, you know, number three on the list here, W thread safety analysis. Um, that's pretty new. Uh, my colleague, DeLeslie, uh, been working on that and, and working on, on getting it, um, you know, enabled and really uh, used within Google. Um, so that's, that, you know, sure is a, a lot of, uh, a lot of hits for a, a brand new warning. Um, turns out, you know, most of them are from DeLeslie building all the code <laughs> and seeing where all the bugs are. So some bugs in Google code, some bugs in Clang. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he does a lot of this. So, um, so the, 
the top 11 warnings. Um, <laughs> uh, this, uh, you know, that, that adds uh, overloaded virtual into the mix. Um, this one I also happen to know. Um, turns out we don't have Clang's version of this turned on, um, but uh, my colleague uh, David Blakey um, has been building all of Google's code and seeing where this fires. So I'll come in again. <laughs> the top 12 warnings. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, we had uh, invalid uh, preprocessor token. Um, I actually didn't know what this was, and I went and looked at a couple, a couple of cases where this fired. And uh, mostly, it looks like it's what happens when you leave a um, close quote off of a, a, a string literal that you've broken up uh, across multiple lines. Um, so you saw uh, W format on there. Um, man, printf. Um, so we have uh, three different warnings that really catch a lot of misuses of, of printf and friends. Um, uh, w format, W format security, because you know using this API can cause security vulnerabilities in your program, uh, and uh, W nonpod var args. Um, so uh, yeah, that was uh, you know we, these come up so many times. Um, because printf is a terrible API and we should have something better. Um, certainly a lot of, uh, for, the, for this, uh, the second one, uh, can't pass uh, you know, non-pod object of type blah to um, variadic function. Um, uh, most of those are, um, you handed me a string and you meant to hand me a um, care star. Uh, for this first one, uh, this is, um, you know, I'm presenting this both because it's sort of interesting data in itself and to show that, yes, we, you know, we really do pull out the, um, the uh, arguments to, the, uh, to Clang's diagnostic format strings. Um, you know, these are really important things for our programmers to be worrying about, uh, uh, you know, whether you're passing an int or a long you know, through this, uh, to the, to this, this you know, number formatting operation. Um, so that's, that's uh, errors and warnings. Um, talk a little bit about notes. Um, so this, this uh, table is, um, uh, these are not the actual notes, obviously. These are the errors or warnings that the notes are attached to. Um, the middle column is how many times these showed up uh, in, in our data set. And left column is the average number of notes uh, attached to each of these. And so the, the bottom half of this top 10 list is, is sort of in a reasonable place. You know, five nodes, you got your, you know, was declared here, maybe a, um, you know, template uh, instantiation stack or macro expansion stack. That's, that's not too bad. Um, but 17 notes on average, um, I, I had to see what was going on here. Um, so this, this is what's going on here. Uh, so there's this RE2 regular expression library written by a uh, really smart you know, guy at Google, uh, uh, Russ Cox. Um, and uh, it has this, this uh, class in its interface called arg. Um, and so, uh, it, you, know, so um, you handed a regular expression and some, some uh, arg objects, uh, and the uh, regular expression parser fills in these arg objects with uh, values of the appropriate type, and so you can construct an arg from pointer to all, from all kinds of pointer types, um, all your your favorite scalar types, um, including t. Uh, so that's that's fine. That, that code's fine. Um, things go real pear shaped when you try to pass one of these as a const ref, and you try to construct one from null. Um, this is just the start of the wall of text that you get, or I should say got. Um, so uh, we, we tell you uh, where null came from, because that's you know, important information. Um, and then we tell you all of the constructors, and that they all were expanded from macros. Um, so uh, 30, 30 notes for you know, one, uh, one little mistake. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, so, um, I actually fixed this bug today. <laughs> uh, fi finally tracked it down, and it turns out, you know, our, our clever code to uh, 
uh, stop emitting uh, you know, overload candidate notes uh, was not firing for this for various subtle reasons or it, yeah, anyway. Um, so I committed that, I committed a fix for that uh, this afternoon. So um, this is, I guess, my, my poster child for, uh, we can use this data to find bugs in Clang, um, which is kind of cool. Um, just for the sake of completeness, uh, um, fatal errors, uh, well, there's really only one, it's file not found. Um, uh, <laughs> but when I went to look at this data, there's this sort of smattering of other errors, uh, uh, you know, things that I would expect to be just normal errors or warnings. Um, turns out, like, one guy, one afternoon, just decided that he'd turn on W fatal error for his builds, so, like you do. Um, so that, I, I talked uh, a lot about the sort of head of the distribution of, of uh, diagnostics that we see. Um, this is a selection from the long tail. These are diagnostics that showed up once uh, in, in all 30,000 engineer hours, or 30,000 engineer weeks, sorry. Um, and there's, you know, there's some uh, creative and, and interesting uh, constructs that must have led to these. Um, uh, you know, invalid file name for line marker directive. Um, like, I don't even know how you do that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm glad that Clang is diagnosing all of these, um, and, um, but, you know, points to our, our you know, cl very clever engineers for, for trying. Um, I just want to talk for a couple minutes about some of the directions we want to go with this. Um, the big thing is, is sort of a, a session analysis, right? So we can, look at, um, we can look at the builds that an engineer did that failed and look at the diagnostics they got. Um, but we're, what we really want to know is um, how long did it take them to, to fix that error that they'd made in their code? Uh, how, many, how many times did they have to retry that build uh, before they, they, you know, like, figure, before, before they got their code, you know, sort of nominally correct? Um, and so that's going to take a little bit more uh, uh, actual programming in terms of the data collection um, and, and uh, sort of, uh, you know, correlation and analysis. Um, but that should, that should actually... Um, be really valuable for action, for you know, really looking at you know how good are these diagnostics, how um, how much are they helping the programmer figure out what mistake they made, uh, and and you know suggesting how they can fix it. Um, we want to uh, to you know define some metrics that we um, are are interesting and, and valuable to track over time, um, and and see you know as we uh, as we make changes to the Clang diagnostics as we roll out new versions. Um, you know, do these metrics change? Like, what those metrics are, like, I don't know yet. Um, but, you know, we, we, uh, we're gonna try to, to figure some of that stuff out. Um, the printf thing I talked about earlier was sort of a, a stupid example, but um, I, I think there's some, um, we, may, we may be able to use this to sort of give feedback to library maintainers. You know, we can look at, are people making certain mistakes in, you know, when, when using, you know, certain interfaces, or, uh, you know, are there, um, are there patterns that, that users keep trying that don't work but should? Um, and that, that might be uh, really useful information for a, a library maintainer. And then, uh, you know, just a, another, another sort of more specific thing is um, looking at uh, what type of corrections we offer and, you know, sort of trying to figure out how, you know, how good they are now and whether we can improve them in some way. Um, and you know, I already have uh, some some ideas there, um, but nothing, no real you know, solid work yet. Um, so that's all I got. A little short talk. Uh, any questions? Anything anybody wants to know? Uh, could you use the mic, please? Thank you. Did you worry at all about the creepiness factor? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so uh, when I said our build system um, stores uh, all of these build results, um, we actually uh, the um, it's actually very valuable. Like, there's a nice uh, uh, web front end to um, to some of these things, and it's actually been really valuable to be able to to you know complain about, hey, my build is broken, and I don't understand why. Here's 
the actual results um, that I got. You know, can you can you explain this to me? Um, that's been that's been really valuable for us. So um, I think you know our, our engineers sort of understand this um, that that you know this all this data is is there and sort of available for other engineers to look at. Anything else? Going once, going twice. Question in the back. Um, no promises. <laughs> there may be lawyers involved. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, David suggested that we might be able to make a, a sanitized version of this data available. Um, no promises. Uh, it, it would be really cool if we could. Uh, um, yeah. So we'd we'd make the the um, we'd make the data available in sort of a, a scrubbed form. Um, I I'm not sure how much the um, the sort of collection tool would be generally applicable because most people don't have this, you know, crazy build system. So. Um, I, I, that's not something I've really looked into in detail. I mean, honestly, the um, you know, preparing for this talk was the the most I've looked at this data overall. The, I mean, the system's pretty new. Um, uh, so. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely something that we want to look at, um, is you know, like clustering in, in various dimensions. Uh, there's a hand back there. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, the question was, uh, uh, have we looked at uh, uh, like clusters of data in any any way? And, and no, no, we haven't yet. Question: Could you use the mic, please? looked at doing it for GCC? Um, so we have uh, you know, the very basic, just take the GCC message. Like we haven't tried to you know, break it down into what were the arguments, you know, the, the sort of equivalent, like um, try to reverse engineer the GCC format strings. Um, but we do have the sort of basic, um, uh, just what, what was the message, and we can sort of do regular expression matching on that um, in, in the, uh, on the analysis side. Um, so yeah, we do see uh, you know, what. Um, what diagnostics people see from GCC. Um, a lot of them are terrible. Things that Clang doesn't warn about because they're not bugs. All right, I think that's it.